Welcome to Rocks 101, where I'm going to show you my basic approach to painting rocks with watercolors. And I'll mix up my favorite rock colors, which are burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and rose doré. I'll start my demonstration with a blank sheet of 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. First, I'll lay down a base rock shape made up of these three colors. I'll try and vary back and forth between these colors to make a rock more interesting. I don't want to paint boring solid brown rocks. I want my rocks to have some punch. It's getting a little bland, so I'll add some more rose doré and burnt sienna. I'll keep the base colors close in value though, since I'm adding layers of shading after it is dried. Before these colors lose their shine, I'll sprinkle them with table salt for texture. Next, using the very same colors, we'll begin to sort out the rock shapes in my colorful blob. I'll try to distinguish the largest groups of rocks by shading. I'll tend to shade with the hard edge towards the bottom and a soft edge towards the top, though this is not the rule. I'll generally soften the upper edge by flaring it out with different cracks and crevices, or by dabbing it with a Kleenex tissue, or by brushing it with water. Usually, I'll use a combination of these three methods on each group of rocks. After the first step of shading is dry, I'll come back in with some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. This time though, I tend to shade within the previously shaded areas. I don't want to overwork the rocks and lose the impact of the base colors. As these are transparent watercolors, they can build upon each other. So when I layer one shade of equal value over another shade, the effect is cumulative and thus darker. This might seem obvious, but note that unlike an opaque color, which simply covers and overrules what is underneath, a transparent color adds the color below. I prefer to use flat brushes for this task, alternating between the long tip edge and the tip corners. You can see the rocks slowly begin to take shape from out of the blob. For this next step in shading, I want to make sure that I don't paint too much, so I've switched to my rigger brush. It helps me control myself by acting like a governor. You can only cover so much area with a rigger. And with it, using a slightly darker value of the same colors, I'll form even smaller cracks and crevices. But the trick is to not paint too much. This cannot be overemphasized. Less is often more with watercolors. Again, I am almost exclusively shading within the previously shaded areas. And for a final touch, I'll often mix a lean or watery batch of cobalt blue. With this color's subtle shading ability, I'll better distinguish various rock groups from one another. They go very lightly with the cobalt blue, it will dry darker than what you might expect. 
I use this for my fine tuning shading, so I use it sparingly. There you go, from blob to rock pile. Watercolors are great, and it's the perfect medium for painting rocks.